In today's high-pressure society, everyone deals with stress, and for most people, that stress can often turn into anxiety. It's one of the most common challenges that people face, but it's also far too often overlooked as a potential mental health concern. Understanding the triggers, the types, the signs, and the best known tools used for treatment, this allows you to take back a level of control and that's when you stand a chance at managing or even overcoming anxiety in your life. So if you're ready to learn what differentiates stress from anxiety, as well as some methods and tools you can use in your life to take back control, then join us on today's Life Design Podcast for our Mental Health Mondays episode titled Anxiety, Taking Back Control. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe now so you can join us on every episode. We truly appreciate it. And be sure to engage in the comments section of your favorite platform for your chance to be invited as a guest on one of our episodes. Welcome back to the Life Design Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Borland, aka Coach Michael. Today's topic of anxiety is one of the most common challenges people face. And again, it's also far too often overlooked as a potential mental health concern in today's high pressure society that we live in. So let's start with a simple understanding of anxiety itself. And first, I want to be clear that anxiety is normal and and often it's a healthy emotion. It's a natural emotion that's meant to keep us aware of potential risks and dangers, okay? Things that are outside of what we would typically consider normal or safe, or we might even say outside of ideal within our daily experience, what we consider ideal. That said, it can also become a disorder, right? When when the feelings become excessive or too persistent and and they begin to interfere with our daily living. So listen, I want to be real here. And that reality is that over the last few years, I've come to understand that I struggle with anxiety at times, just like everybody else does. And it's not always a bad thing. And it's never something to be ashamed of. Okay. This is the reason that I want to talk about it today. I want to help break some of these misconceptions and and stigmas that are attached to it. So let's start with what are some of the triggers that can cause anxiety in our modern lives? Okay. Most of these triggers, they're everyday things like work pressure, uh, social media influences, financial concerns, even the constant bombardment of information, which quite frankly, we all know can easily become overwhelming at times. Right? Think about that for a second. Work pressures. Everybody's used to this. You get stressed because work's putting a lot of pressure on you. Sometimes that can start to push into the area of anxiety. Social media influences. Lord knows those are creating tons of anxiety in people these days. Actually, anxiety, anger, distrust, violence. I mean, there's so much going on with it. Uh, financial concerns obviously can put us in a level of stress and and can cause a lot of anxiety for people at times. And again, even that constant bombardment of information, you know, again, a lot of that comes from those social media influences and a lot of that is often very negative. Um, but but that that constant, you know, just piling on of information, it it can start to create lots of stress and and to the point of anxiety at times. So let's look at the dis, uh, the distinctions, right? The differences between our everyday stress, such as, you know, the way that we would respond to, to a known stressor, right? As opposed to anxiety, which often lacks a clear proportional cause. So what do I mean by that? I mean, the, the cause, the trigger is not actually at the level of the anxiety that we experience, right? That, that, 
happens often for a lot of people. So stress itself, it's typically a short term thing, right? It resolves once the stressor itself is removed. Whereas the, again, anxiety, it can persist. It can actually worsen over time. So here, let's look at some examples, right? We use that work situation, a work project. Okay. That's one preparing for a family event or maybe dealing with a rude client or even something like a dismissive friend or family member. Those are things that can create stress in our lives. Anxiety, on the other hand, oftentimes can start as a stress, such as maybe I don't know, a child going away to a party, right? Or, or a loved one that's going on a trip. But for some people, this can evolve into anxiety, even debilitating anxiety, especially maybe in a case where you're unable to make contact with that loved one. You know, if, if they don't happen to show up back at back home at an expected time. Okay, for most of us, this would lead to some minor amount of anxiety. But for some people, it can become excessive and it can even turn into a full blown panic attack. Now, I don't want to create too long of a list, but let's just look at three of the most common types of anxiety disorders. So the first one coming to mind is uh, it's called general anxiety disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, right? Or GAD. And those examples of those would be just what we sh what we shared a minute ago. You know, the work project, the family event, maybe the rude person. Okay, panic disorder is another one, and this would probably equate to that. You know, that loved one not getting home at the expected time. Okay, a third one that's super common is social anxiety disorder. Now, this one's a simple way to explain it would be. Um, maybe the fear of crowds or of, of going into a public space, particularly, you know, a highly uh, active public space like a mall or a nightclub or something like that. Okay. With those things in mind, looking at it as we always do on this podcast, looking at it from a mindset perspective, how can we use our mindset to help manage anxiety? Okay, we want to remember the, the importance of mindset, it, it really can't be overstated. And, and even in this particular topic, how we think about anxiety, it can actually influence how we manage it. Okay, a positive, uh, proactive mindset is always going to be a powerful tool, even when we're dealing with anxiety. When we, when we pause for a minute and, and we think about it, when we have the right mindset, it gives us a certain level of control and we can, we can begin to recognize anxiety, right? We can acknowledge it. We can actually accept it and, and allow it to share its message with us. If this, if this is something that we deal with, meaning anxiety, if we deal with it on on a regular basis, we actually want to create tools that, that, um, that we can use such as breathing techniques or creating a safe space or a support system, or, you know, people that we can have around us to support us. And actually we're going to go over a few of those tools later in the podcast, but let's look at four of the methods, uh, that are, that are specific to using our mindset to help deal with anxiety. So we'll start with what we call, um, you know, learning to shift our perspective, right? We talked about this on a couple of other podcasts, but it's often referred to also as reframing, in, like through NLP and different types of therapies. And we can actually learn to reframe our anxious thoughts. So, so let's look at an example of that. If we're viewing uh, anxiety, or if we, if we choose to, we can begin viewing anxiety as a normal reaction, okay? A reaction that everyone experiences rather than looking at it, as, at it as some kind of, you know, personal failure or as, you know, 
something that's stigmatizing to very few of us, right? So that's one method that can be used is shifting our perspective on the anxiety itself. Another way we can look at it is, or that we, another method we could use, I should say, is self-compassion. Okay, we're, we're not talking fluff stuff here. You guys know I don't, I don't deal with fluff stuff. So it's, it's important to practice self-compassion though, especially in dealing with anxiety. So most of us have a tendency to be pretty self-critical. But practicing kindness toward ourselves, this can drastically help to alleviate both, you know, simple stresses as well as that intense or that chronic anxiety. Okay. Another popular mindset method actually comes from what's called acceptance and commitment therapy principles, or I think they call it ACT, A-C-T. And we'll actually dig a little deeper um, into this particular topic, this particular type of therapy in a, in a future episode when, when our co-host Maxine Marks is with us. But a simple way to use, you know, the ACT, the acceptance and commitment therapy, is practicing accepting your reactions and being present. So we're, we're basically choosing a valued um, direction to both think and act, and then actually taking that intentional action. To be clear though, on, on accepting, let me make this clear. The, the, we're accepting the feelings or the emotions. Okay. There's a difference between accepting them as your current experience. Maybe with the word acknowledging it makes more sense to you, but acknowledging it is one thing than accepting it. Okay. I know this is how I feel. Yes, this is my current experience. Okay. That's different than inviting it back. Okay. We're not encouraging you to do the latter. Do not invite it back. This is only accepting or being okay with the fact that this, these anxious feelings arose within us. Then we refocus our thoughts and our energies on moving beyond those anxious feelings. Okay. When it comes to, um, to refocusing and, and action steps, some of my former clients chose things like music or by music specifically, I mean, playing instruments. Maybe they were a drummer or, you know, a guitarist or a pianist or, you know, trumpet or saxophone, whatever instrument that was, the harp, harmonica, sorry. Um, that's how I was referring to harmonica, but the harp too, you know, um, gardening, Gardening is a popular one, or art, or reading. Um, of course, exercise, right? Exercise is a great option. You're redirecting that, um, you know, the thoughts and the actual energy that, that we put into it. Rather than trying to fight the negative thought, we replace it with a different one. Okay. The fourth one is mindfulness. Okay. Mindfulness is another great tool, and it helps us in recognizing and actually distancing oneself, distancing ourselves from that anxious thought instead of trying to fight it. And again, this falls right, right into place with, uh, with ACT, acceptance and, and commitment therapies. Because again, you're acknowledging and you're actually accepting, not inviting, right? Not inviting them to, to stay or to come back. You're simply allowing those feelings to share their message with you, right? Stresses and anxieties are natural. They're intended to give us a message that there might be some potential dangers. And, and that's what we're accepting is we're accepting them to do their job. Okay. But and honestly, I'll go a bit deeper into this on this Wednesday's episode, Mastering Meditation. Okay. Um, so you'll see that come out on, on Wednesday, but how do we recognize some of these signs of anxiety? Okay. One group of signs that are, that are the, uh, that we can recognize are the physical symptoms. So common physical symptoms, um, you know, of, of anxiety, right? Physical symptoms of anxiety include increased heart rate, 
uh, rapid breathing, of course, restlessness, trouble sleeping. Okay, those are pretty common physical signs of anxiety. And these are our body's natural responses um, to anything that's a perceived threat or some, some perceived stress okay, or to actual physical stresses. Um, and as you begin to practice controlling anxiety, you'll learn to recognize the increasing levels, okay, as well as recognizing when those levels actually exceed what we'll call common stresses, right? They begin, the levels begin to represent anxiety. Okay, there's also emotional symptoms. Now, emotional um, indicators of anxiety, they could involve things like persistent feelings of dread would be a good word, okay? Um, excessive worry, being constantly on edge or agitated, okay? This is where it begins to significantly affect our daily functioning or our daily lives. And, and it really could be as simple as interrupting our focus, making it hard to stay, you know, highly focused on something. Or it could be as intense as, you know, um, feeling fearful to leave our home, right? That, that would drastically affect most people's lives. And that's not all that uncommon. So another one is behavioral changes, okay? This is a definite sign um, for anxiety, okay? Uh, they're, they're very recognizable. And they can lead to behavioral changes like avoidance of certain types of situations. Again, social withdrawal, okay? Even reliance on what we'll call unhelpful coping mechanisms, like, like such as substance uh, use. I won't say abuse at this point, but substance use. Even minor substance use, okay? These, they're not usually seen in the mildest of cases, often found when anxiety becomes a little more chronic. So the last group of signs um, we'll discuss today are on the cognitive side of thing. So some of the cognitive signs of anxiety include things like constantly worrying, okay, uh, racing thoughts, right, where we can't control them. They're just racing through our minds, uh, difficulty concentrating. Now, I, let me be clear on this. There's minor in interruptions in, in focus, meaning a, a specified, you know, uh, pointed focus. And then there's difficulty in concentrating at all. So it's, it's a heightened level. And this, this goes beyond, like I said, simple lack of focus, and it can disrupt normal thought processes, or even decision-making, okay? That's the level we're talking about here. Now, there have been many insights on anxiety and how to manage anxiety um, found through research. So one of the studies uh, that I came across was focused on the use of cognitive behavioral therapy. Again, talked about this in, in a different podcast on Mental Health Mondays. Uh, they call that CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, and they use it for anxiety. And this, in this particular study was what's called a meta-analysis of 27 individual studies. And what they found was a moderate to large effect of, of therapy and uh, cognitive behavioral therapy in particular on anxiety symptoms. Um, it, it had a moderate effect on depressive symptoms, depression. Okay. The strongest effects, you know, when they, when they looked at the, the size or the gravity of the effects was actually found to be on OCD and acute stress disorders. Okay. And, and then I believe the weakest ones were in the panic disorder area and the, the relevance to this particular study was that it, it underscores the effectiveness of CBT, the cognitive behavioral therapy, across a variety of types of anxiety disorders. And 
it highlighted its role as a key treatment strategy. So what about people though that that choose not to use therapy as an option? Now, I actually want to pause for a minute and say, please, if you're suffering with this at a, at a heightened level, do not rule out therapy. Okay. I'm not a therapist. I personally don't benefit from this, but you know, listen to a couple of the other podcasts where we talk about what therapy is, what to expect from a therapy session. And you would be surprised if you haven't tried it. Uh, so we'll leave that at that, but let's consider a second study. And, and this is one that, uh, that I came across where they focused on lifestyle changes and anxiety. Okay. How lifestyle changes affect anxiety. And this was actually a study. It was a Canadian study that was conducted during the C-19 pandemic. Uh, you know, the, the researchers had actually investigated the associations between this lifestyle uh, behaviors and, and symptoms of depression and anxiety. And the study actually emphasized the impacts of factors like nutrition, uh, exercise, stress management itself, you know, different types of methods, and, and, and how those all affected our anxiety levels. The findings that they had actually highlighted the significant role that lifestyle factors play in managing anxiety. Okay, let me say that again. The, the, the findings of this study highlighted the significance of the role of lifestyle factors and how they played into managing anxiety. What exactly does that mean? Well, it's suggested that improvements in things like sleep habits, having social support, like, like a support network, be it, be it friends or family, what have you, coaches, mentors, okay, using stress reduction techniques and, and regular exercise itself, how those can drastically benefit our mental health. And, and one of those things in one of those areas was reducing stress and anxiety. So all that said, there's some practical tips for managing anxiety. Okay. As, as they found in the Canadian study, right? Lifestyle adjustments are a great option for managing both common stressors as well as anxiety itself. And four of the best options showed out to be or proved to be regular exercise, a balanced diet, adequate sleep, and let me say this accurately, task management. We all know this is often referred to as time management, but on a side note, I'm going to highly recommend that you listen to my episode on time management. I believe the title was time management, the billion dollar lie. Okay. It's a little aggressive in the title, but when you listen to it, you'll get the point. Okay. It's going to give you a life altering perspective on time versus tasks. Okay. And, and the management of, of that in particular. So regardless, you'll, you, you can quickly and easily experience a, a tremendous reduction in anxiety, um, by making just small, um, achievable changes okay in your daily routines we're, we're not talking about things that are drastic changes the results are drastic the changes are are very minute okay back to the study um beyond beyond the top four options i was also found that mindfulness exercises and, and relaxation techniques such as you know breathing techniques okay they can be used to calm our minds Okay, to calm and, and, and relax our bodies during moments of anxiety. Okay, a lot of people use that. Breathing techniques are, are one of the top um, choices that, that people use in that area. Cognitive strategies, uh, those are another one. And, and they suggest things such as challenging negative thoughts. 
Okay. Now I want to be clear on something. There are two different ways to do this. There's the option of challenging them. And, and that doesn't mean refusing them, so to speak. But how would you challenge someone? Right? You get this thought in your head and you say, oh, you know, whatever the thought may be. Instead of saying, no, you're wrong. I don't believe you. Really? Is that really true? You know, I believe I'm afraid to go into this room because I know there's a hundred people in there. Is that really true? Have I, have I really never had a decent experience in a room of a hundred people or in a, in a, within the um, area of, of a hundred people or however you want to challenge it? I, th I think you get the point. Okay. Journaling to understand anxiety triggers. Okay. Again, these, these are things that affect people at different levels. Journaling is simply a, a simple way of, of creating self-awareness. Okay. And, and it can help certain people with certain anxiety triggers. Practicing gratitude has, has proven to be extremely helpful for many people. But practicing gratitude doesn't just mean that I'm feeling grateful for something. Okay. It could also be in the acceptance of gratitude from someone else. Meaning someone tells you they're very grateful for something you've done for them or for the way you, the way they feel around you or whatever the case is to actually practice and work on accepting that. Or if you're, if you're doing a gratitude exercise to think about the times, especially more recently or from people that are closer to you that you care more about where they've expressed their gratitude to you and, and using that and, and grabbing onto that feeling, how it made you feel. And if it made you feel uncomfortable, then it's the practice of getting comfortable with that, of being appreciated by other people, having people express their gratitude to you. That is a huge, huge um, tool. And, and it's something different than what most people talk about. Um, I believe someone was talking about this, just told me about this um, in the last couple of days. I believe it was Andrew Huberman. Okay, if you don't listen to his podcast, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Okay, so I suggest you listen to that one too. Uh, just don't leave this one. I'm going to, I'm going to keep an eye on you. So I'm going to know. Um, but he has one out where he talks about that. And I think it's pretty recent. So I think it came out in, in November of 2023. I, I just haven't heard it. So I'm not sure, but I know it was on that subject. So the next thing to, to consider is building a support network. Okay. Whether it's friends, whether it's family, a support group, again, a coach, a mentor. Okay. This is one of the most common recommendations that, that we hear in the industry, be it therapist, you know, what have you. It, it's a very common recommendation and we never want to overlook it. Okay. It's extremely powerful because as humans, that connection is vital, right? So beyond these, we want to take into consideration professional help such as therapy or counseling, okay? These can be imperative, especially if anxiety is significantly impacting the quality of, of your life, okay? Let me be clear on this. You hear me say this on every episode. I am not offering medical advice. Okay? This is a podcast. This is a conversation. I am not a doctor, okay? There's no guarantee that any of these techniques will help every single person. Okay. I am simply sharing information on options that have proven, been proven to help literally millions of people. Okay. Not 100% of people, but millions of people. And they're supported by study after study that have been conducted through some of the most 
highly respected groups in a variety of fields. Okay. And this is why sometimes you'll hear me say, I don't always want to quote specific um, studies that were done because we can always nitpick any given study, right? But when you take one, you know, where they, they reviewed 27 different studies and found that all the studies pointed in a similar direction, that's, that's some, some pretty, uh, uh, some pretty strong evidence, right? So that, that being said, okay, if anxiety is significantly affecting your life, please, please seek professional help. Okay. If you're not sure where to look, reach out to your personal physician or, or a local medical, you know, health professional and ask for some guidance. If you don't find what you need, feel free to contact us here through the podcast. Okay. We'll do what we can to help you find you know, the appropriate help. Again, not medical advice, but if we can help, we will do our best to find a way. Okay. Listen, there are tons of additional resources available that offer deep insight into managing anxiety, be it books, online apps or tools, you know, professional organizations, hotlines. There's even, again, community engagement. Okay. So many more. There is no shortage of tools or of resources available to help you manage or even overcome anxiety. You know, minor, be it minor stresses or chronic anxiety. Hopefully, it doesn't get to the very, you know, to the chronic point. Okay, let me say this slowly. There is no reason to be ashamed or to hesitate in getting help. Okay. It really boils down to you deciding that overcoming that, these stresses or this anxiety in particular, that it's a priority. Okay. It, it boils down to you making that decision. Seeking help is, it's a sign of strength. This is not a weakness. So please don't wait to make managing your anxiety a priority. So that's really, that's, that's our time for today. We might have even gone a little bit over. Uh, I, I am trying to keep these, particularly this solo podcast, into the uh, 20 to maybe 25 minute range. So if, if you found any value at all in today's episode or in anything in our podcast, please like, subscribe, share these podcasts and, and go online and go, you know, go on to the, to the podcast platforms and, and rate our podcast, hopefully as a five star. Okay. Each of these uh, options actually helps our encouraging message bring valuable insights to more ears, to more minds and hearts uh, of some really good people. And that's our goal for being here. So I thank you again for joining us on the Life Design Podcast. I look forward to sharing more with you very soon. And I definitely look forward to meeting I'd like to say all of you, but at least some of you very soon. If you think you might want to be a guest on the podcast with something interesting to talk about, a great message to share, please reach out to us. Let us know. Stay engaged. Make comments. Hope to see you soon. But until then, as always, live awesome and enjoy your journey. <laughs>